Lenny Dijkstra was once on top of the world. He was a famous baseball player with the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies, playing 12 seasons before he retired. Once he got out of baseball, Lenny went down several different paths, most of which weren't great. He started a car wash with his brother, making more than $1 million a year. Lenny thought it was a great investment because people always needed their cars washed. He and his company would never become irrelevant. He'd later sell the business at a huge profit, but lost it all. Even though Lenny already had a multi-million dollar home, he had to have a better one. He set his sights on Canadian hockey legend Wayne Gretzky's former mansion and paid a cool $14 million for it. He joined Wall Street leader Jim Cramer to trade stocks, writing an advice column filled with baseball metaphors and all. At one point, Lenny even became an investment advisor. People paid him nearly $1,000 to get his opinions, but he said it was a steal. He claimed that people who invested with him earned $250,000 in a year based on his advice. On the surface level, everything seemed okay. Lenny's career wasn't suffering after he retired from baseball and he was making a go of it. Unfortunately, not everything was as it seemed. Lenny earned the nickname Nails during his baseball career. He was a force to be reckoned with in the late 1980s through the mid-1990s. He played with absolute abandon, running into walls and projecting a persona of greatness. It was hard to believe Lenny was anything short of amazing. Maybe Lenny manifested his greatness for a time. Lenny split his 12-year career between the Mets and the Phillies. He was a three-time All-Star player, and one year, he came in second place for MVP behind Barry Bonds. Lenny was on the New York Mets in 1986 when they won the World Series, thanks to Bill Buckner's career-altering mistake. While it wasn't his hit that won the game, Lenny was a powerhouse leadoff hitter who played a big role in the team's success. He hit a walk-off home run in Game 3 of the National League Championship Series that's still considered one of the best plays in franchise history and of his career. In 1989, Lenny was traded to the Phillies. He wasn't happy at first, but the fans quickly welcomed him. However, his career declined in 1991 after Lenny was injured in a drunk driving accident. After leaving a party, he crashed into a tree, injuring himself and his teammate, Darren Dalton. Lenny hurt his ribs, broke his cheekbone, and fractured his collarbone. He was out two months due to his injuries, only to sit out again a few months later when he rebroke his collarbone running into a wall in Cincinnati. This injury put him out for the rest of the season. Lenny was ready to take on the next year, but he was hit by a pitch on opening day and broke his hand. Over two years, he played just 145 out of 324 games. The next year, Lenny finally got his career back on track. He even led the Phillies to the World Series, though they lost to the defending champion Toronto Blue Jays. Twenty years later, we learned Lenny paid private investigators half a million dollars to dig up dirt on MLB umpires. He used that dirt to get a better strike zone during games. It's no wonder he led the league in walks and made the all-star team three years running. Lenny played his last game in 1996, but he didn't officially retire until 1998. He didn't just blackmail the umpires. He also took performance-enhancing drugs to give him a competitive edge. His life unraveled when he was named in the Mitchell Report, along with 88 other current and former players in December 2007. Regardless of the proof, Lenny didn't meet with the investigators to discuss the allegations raised against him. However, multiple sources outed him, including his brother. Lenny had sold their successful car wash business for $51 million and screwed his brother Kevin out of $4 million. In retaliation, Kevin cooperated with investigators and told them all about Lenny's use. Because he wasn't playing, anymore. No charges were brought against him. Lenny later admitted to using PEDs in a book called The Zeros by Randall Lane. He said he thought he needed to do something to keep him playing at high levels while he got older. Otherwise, he'd get replaced. While the Mitchell Report exposed his past, Lenny tried to make a future in stock trading. His skill was even endorsed by Jim Cramer on CNBC's Mad Money. A lifelong Phillies fan, Jim gave him his own stock investment column on TheStreet.com. At $999 and 95 cents a pop, customers would pay for Lenny to impart his wisdom, and they did. Some questioned his skills, but he was the real deal. According to his co-workers, Lenny followed about 100 stocks and had a research assistant to help him with the others. He made picks himself based on his knowledge and intuition and was doing really well. Then he got greedy. It was always something with Lenny. He was looking for bigger and better things. He pivoted to another career, hoping to publish a new magazine
magazine tailored to people just like him. Former athletes looking to live the highlight. His short-lived stock trading career was over. Lenny swung for the fences with the Players Club and missed. He overcommitted, trying to lump an upscale magazine, charter jet service, concierge service, and brokerage and investment service all in one neat package. These efforts were targeted toward current and former professional athletes. He rolled all of his car wash money into this business venture. All 51 million of them. Lenny was so confident in the Players Club that he borrowed money left and right. He even made more than $32,000 worth of charges on an employee's personal credit card. Lenny paid his employees late, stiffed the printers, and cut corners anywhere he could. As the business spiraled, he'd scream at his employees, badgering them at all hours of the night. He behaved erratically, and his relationships deteriorated faster than his magazine in a deep puddle. Gone were the measured, calculated decisions. The Wall Street wonder was no more. Instead, Lenny then he turned to lies and cons. He conned his mom, nephew, and other family members out of money, and they eventually cut him off and out of their lives. Lenny was on his way to rock bottom. At the height of his career, Lenny had a net worth of more than $58 million. Unfortunately, after a series of bad decisions, Lenny filed for bankruptcy. He claimed that he had only $50,000 worth of assets, but had more than $30 million in liabilities. Despite the best intentions, the Players Club had been a colossal failure. Instead of being the CEO of a successful company, Lenny sat atop a mountain of debt owed to various banks and creditors. All his car wash, baseball, and investing money was gone. His home was a wreck, and Lenny was accused of lying under oath and hiding assets to make his situation sound worse than it really was. Instead of facing his punishment and staying clean, Lenny continued to act out. In the months following his conviction, Lenny was charged with identity theft, drug possession, grand theft auto, lewd behavior, and providing false financial statements. He also faced accusations of passing bad checks and fraud. In the end, Lenny received a three-year sentence for all of his criminal behavior. By August 2009, Lenny had hit rock bottom. He was living out of his car in hotel lobbies, basically anywhere that would let him squat rent-free. His once dream home was in disrepair. It had water damage, missing toilets, torn up flooring and countertops, and other significant damage. He owned a second property, but it was covered in toxic mold. One of the houses was so bad that it was filled with trash and even raw sewage. Vandals made their way in, stripping the house of any valuable pieces of electric wiring. When they left, the home was a shell of what it used to be. Lenny sold his World Series ring to help pay off his debt, but it only raised about $57,000, a drop in the $31 million bucket. Eventually, his case went to bankruptcy court to help liquidate his estate and pay down the creditors. Unfortunately, Lenny fell on old habits, lying under oath and hiding assets. Because of that, he couldn't get his bankruptcy discharged by the courts. Lenny never caught a break. In 2011, he was arrested for grand theft to buy a stolen car. The next day, he was charged with embezzlement. Prosecutors alleged that after he filed for bankruptcy, he got rid of more than $400,000 worth of items from his home without permission, including fixtures, furnishings, and memorabilia. At one point, he even brought a truckload of items to a consignment store. He gutted his homes and either sold or destroyed everything he thought he could get away with. It didn't matter to Lenny, as long as it was gone. Lenny was put on house arrest after the bankruptcy fraud. He faced up to 80 years in prison if convicted of all the charges lobbied against him. Eventually, in June of 2012, Lenny pled guilty to three felonies. He admitted to bankruptcy fraud money laundering, and concealing assets. He admitted to getting rid of the more than $400,000 worth of assets that were part of the original filing. In the end, Lenny got six and a half years of prison time and 500 hours of community service. He was also to pay $200,000 in restitution. Everyone hoped that Lenny would lay low after his conviction, but that wasn't to be. All was quiet for the first few years. Lenny was officially off probation in 2014, and as a condition of his release, he was to undergo weekly drug test. In 2016, he was in the tabloids again for the promotion and the release of his new book, House of Nails. No one really heard from him until 2018, when he was back in the news. Lenny alleged an Uber driver tried to kidnap him. He was in fear of his life because the driver locked the doors and sped up. The driver disagreed with Lenny's account and instead told police that Lenny held him up at gunpoint. No gun was recovered because apparently, Lenny just put his hand in a black plastic bag with a random object 
object and put it to the driver's head to scare him. The body cam from the incident was released by the New Jersey State Police. The once beloved MLB player had been reduced to almost nothing. He has been the butt of an ongoing prank phone call joke with Barstool Sports. They call his personal cell phone and ask him vulgar questions until he hangs up, usually cursing them out along the way. If that's the only reason Lenny is in the news, his life may be turning around, but you never know with Lenny. He just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section what professional sport you'd pick to play if a genie in a bottle was able to make it happen.